All right, y'all, sorry about that. Next up, we're gonna have Trey Hill. All right, Tim, we are ready when you are. Hey, Trey. Um, all right, first we're gonna start with Palmer Toms and then Anthony Dasher. Hey, Palmer, you're on mute if you don't mind unmuting yourself. Hey, Trey, uh, wanted to talk about the injuries you've had to overcome um, in, in getting battling back for this uh, NFL preparation. What's that been like for you? It's been great, man. Being down in Tampa, uh, trained at uh, Yo Murphy in Tampa, it's been great, you know, just to come back down here for pro day and, you know, be 100% for everything, so. Hey, Trey, good to see you. Uh, I know the end of uh, your season last year was kind of cut back, little two procedures you had on your knee, but uh, obviously you're, you're healthy now. Uh, um, just kind of just, just real quick on that, just how, how – how much of a setback, if any, was that? But also the fact you, you already got your degree. It took you just three years to do it. How big a deal is that for you and your big, family? Big deal for me, you know, to get my degree. My mom wanted me to get my degree in three. So, you know, I had my head down, you know, and just stayed working each and every day uh, in the classroom. And that was a big deal to me, my parents, and, you know, I did it for them. So. All right, up next, let's have Nick Farbaugh and then Raphael Haynes. Hey, Trey, uh, two questions here. First, have you had any communication with the Pittsburgh Steelers? And second, you kind of have this brawler style of play on the interior there at center. Do you kind of watch guys? Uh, what, what guys do you watch really to model your game after? Um, I watch uh, several guys, but, you know, I'm me. I'm Trey, and I don't think nobody can take that away from me. I watch uh, people like the Pouncey Twins. Obviously, one did play for the Steelers, and I have talked to them a lot, so. Hey, Trey Raphael from the Three Point Conversion. Uh, two part question. First, um, what are your, um, what are you focusing on to get better at, at moving forward? And mm -hmm. then, what is your inspiration? Like, was it a family member, anyone that, or anything that's been an inspiration throughout this whole process? Repeat the first question again. What What are um, some of your um, some of the attributes or some things that you want to improve on? Okay, um, improve on just the whole aspect of the game, film room, little steps, um, getting to know what D linemen lined up at, um, the hand placement, movement, just the little things that get you over the top and get you over the edge in this football world. And who I do it for, I do it for my parents, my family. I mean, they deserve all the praise for this. They're the ones that helped me get to this point, and I want to do it for them. So that's my why. All right, up next, let's have Matthews Ornelas and then Chip Towers. Good afternoon, Trey. Matthews from Brazil. Um, for a, a lot of offensive linemen, when they go to the NFL, especially the center position, they have to usually have one year playing at the guard or like sitting on the bench a little bit for develop of the game, for the speed of the NFL. This is a problem for you, like playing the guard, like the first year or sitting on the bench, maybe for the first season for be, a, uh, be more ready for the NFL level. No, I think I'm good. Like, me playing guard or center, I think I'll come in as a day one, ready to go type of guy. I mean, I'm the guy that you can call on, you can go to, and I'm gonna know everything that's going on on the field. Just from me playing center to me playing guard, it helped me develop in many different type of ways from calling the fronts or, you know, giving everybody to play the information to do their job. So I feel like I did a great job doing those things. So in the league, it won't be no different. Thank you a lot. Good luck. Appreciate it. Good to see you, Trey. Yeah, specifically on the knee, I'm sure you've been asked a, a ton by the NFL guys about it, but th did you have both knees worked on after the season and, uh, you know, exactly how much rehab and everything was involved after that to where you are now? Can you proclaim yourself 100%? Oh, yes, yeah, so it was a lot of rehab uh, went into it. I did tear both of them, uh, lateral tears, and got both of them scoped in the same bed. But – Rehab, that was a big part of my process and, you know, me getting back on my feet to 100%.
So once I got that done, you know, everything else took care of itself. All right, thanks so much, Trey. You're welcome, appreciate y'all. And good, and good luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Next up, we'll have Trey Kitty. Hey, Trey, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good. Okay, first up, we're going to start with Matthews Ornelias and then Nick Farball. Thanks, Catherine. That, that pronounce was perfect. They asked me for the first time. Great. Uh, great. <laughs> Trey, first of all, congratulations for the, the pro day and going for the NFL draft. Uh, we talk a lot about senior bowl and thinks you, the players have to be better, like for being the NFL level. Well, what do you think that's your like major skill that you need to develop uh, for be a, 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 a player that teams may watch or like if they're not watching yet, they will watch you if you be better in one or two skills? Um, I think every aspect of my game uh, I can improve on. I don't think I'm nowhere near my son as a football player. So really just in every aspect. Um, to be specific, I mean, sometimes I tend to get, you know, a little bit choppy on top of my routes when I clean it up and, you know, be more consistent with my hands and feet in the blocking game. Hey, Thank Trey, you. you care about Pittsburgh sports now. Uh, for two questions here. One, have you met with the Steelers at all? And two, you know, you really showed out at the Senior Bowl, a lot of one-handed catches, a lot of really good routes there. How do you think – that showcase down there in Mobile really helped you and helped scouts even see your game beyond the tape? Um, yes, I have spoken to the Steelers. And uh, I think the Super Bowl was great, um, great for me, really helped me, um, you know, not having the production that I went into this year at Georgia. So being able to go to the Senior Bowl and kind of show what I have, um, you know, I think it really helped me uh, moving forward. Okay, up next, let's have Anthony Dasher and then Raphael Haynes. Hey, Trey, this is kind of a, a Georgia question right here, but I just want to get your take on uh, on Darnell Washington. I mean, the steps you expect he's going to be able to take from year one to year two, and how much trouble is he going to be for opposing defenses next fall? Hey, he's, he's, he's going to be a problem. Um, you know, I said this a lot, um, even to talking to teams this offseason, like, um, you know, guys that come in as a five-star, you know, really, like, think they know it all and, you know, have a big head, but he really came in, like, willing to learn. Um, you know, he come to me asking questions all the time, and I think that was that was huge. Uh, you know, me being an older guy, so I was able to help him. I think he'd be a great player in the future. Hey, Trey, Rafael from the Three Point Conversion. Trey, you talked about the Senior Bowl and the um, catches and how you feel like it improved your, your draft position and everything. But going into the NFL, knowing that, that it's a passing league and the tight ends are used in the passing game more than ever now, are you excited to showcase that now? And you feel like because you're going into that, you'll be able to show everyone the type of skill set that, that you do have? Right, 100%. Um, you know, definitely want to do that, be able to show my skill set. Um, but also, we to show my skill set in both sides of the ball. I mean, yes, the league's a passing league now, but, you know, still need guys that can block as well. So I feel like I can do both. Um, you make me a three down tight end. And, um, you know, I'm really looking, trying to do. All right, up next, let's have Andrew Freeman. Hey, Trey, Andrew Freeman from the Bear Report. Uh, appreciate your time today. Um, so first thing, um, have you had any interaction with Chicago Bears in the pre-draft process? And then at the Senior Bowl, you measured in with 11-inch hands, and we saw some highlight reel catches from you, one-handed catches down there at the Senior Bowl. So how do you think that helps you from a receiving um, aspect and then from a blocking aspect, too, with that hand size? Um, I spoke with the, uh, the Bears at the Senior Bowl. Um, and also, I mean, I think, you know, just having big hands kind of helps me in every aspect of my game. Um, you know, being able to grab somebody or 
grab the ball of the year. Um, you know, definitely think I was blessed with some good hands. So um, just use them to the best of my advantage. All right, thanks. All right, up next, let's have Zenny Abraham and then Jennifer Lee Chan. Uh, Trey, how are you? Zenny Abraham, Zenny 62 Media. What's your favorite pattern to run? Thank you. Um, I don't know. There's, there's, there's quite a few, so many. Um, kind of, I kind of need like a down a distance of, could you give me that? Sure. Uh, third down and eight uh, opponents, 40 yard line. Um, I like an option route, you know, be able to, to um, go in or out at 10 yards, depending on the defensive leverage. So an option route. Yeah, thank you. I cover the 49ers for NBC Sports. George Kittle is obviously one of the most uh, prolific tight ends out there right now. How would you compare yourself to him in your game? And have you talked to the 49ers at all? Um, talked to the 49ers at the Senior Bowl. Um, and I mean, I watch a lot of guys in the league all the time. Um, you know, try to, you know, pick things from every guy's game. Um, definitely watch George Kittle a lot. And um, not like really like trying to compare myself, just really just trying to take things that he does well, like in a blocking game or running routes, just kind of take what he does and try to implement it in my game. Um, so really just that. He pr prides himself in being one of the best run blockers out there. He actually enjoys that type of the, that part of the game more. Would you say that you're similar in that aspect? Um, I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm both ways. I'm slapped in the middle. Um, I don't really have a preference. That's why I enjoy being inside in, you know, the best of both worlds, be able to go on run routes against DBs and backers and, you know, be in the trench with the linemen and, and, you know, put up a fight. So I like both parts of the game. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, Trey. No problem. Actually, hold on one second. We have one more. Trey, can you come back? I think Chip Towers wanted to ask one more question. Is that right, Chip? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, one I, more. Sorry. Just raised my hand there, uh, Ray. Uh, 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 Trey, sorry. Uh, no, I just wanted to ask you, uh, you know, about the graduate transfer experience. Did you feel like you got, you know, kind of everything out of that, uh, leaving Florida State and coming to Georgia? And did you did you trade any notes with Jermaine Johnson uh, on your way out? Um. You know, it was it was tough you know, into the portal. I didn't think I was going to be a transfer guy. Um, you know, I had a great time at Florida State, uh, but coming here was awesome. Um, you know, definitely think I grew as a person and a player. Um, and as far as uh, Jermaine, um, I mean, me and him kind of spoke about it a little bit. Um, I'm happy for him. You know, um, hope he does well this year. And um, but yeah, I don't really know if I answered your question. Did I? Chip, did, did that answer I just question? wondered if you felt like it kind of helped your situation. Obviously, the goal was to further your education and put yourself in position to be drafted, right? Um, I think for sure. I think even since this year for me was I always had a knock at Florida State for my blocking. And I think I wanted to come to the SEC and prove that I can block. Uh, hold my own in SEC. I think I did that this year. So I definitely think it did help me. All right. Thanks so much, Trey. You're actually done now. I hey, appreciate it. Y'all have a good one. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I think we're going to be taking a quick break, but we'll be started back with another player in just a second.
All right, Catherine, we have Monty and we will begin when you are. Yo. Hey, Monty. Hi, Monty, how are you? What's up? All righty, guys, um, if you have a question for Monty, please um, raise your hand on this Zoom. All right, first we're gonna start with Chip Towers. Hello, Monty, good to see you. What's up, uh, Chip? <laughs> what's going on? Uh, you look you look like today you felt really well. Like, can you tell tell us how much you recovered, how much you needed to recover, and and how you felt like you did today? First off, I said it, it was showtime before, but I felt like I did good though. Um, due to the people at EXOs, they took real good care of me from January, you know, to March, you know, as far as treatment, and you know, they made sure I was good. So. Big, you know, shout out to them for, you know, helping me get to this moment and helping me perform well. All right, up next, let's have Raphael Hayes, Haynes and then Jake Rowe. Hey, Monty. Um, first off, man, just congrats on your career at Georgia. Um, it's Raphael from the three-point conversion. <laughs> and um, see you hyped, see you um, very um, upbeat today. Waking up today, knowing you had this pro day, knowing that you didn't have that extra, I guess, day to um, show the scouts and everybody what you have and what you can do, you know, since they canceled the NFL combine. Did you have any anxiety or any added pressure before you started today? Anxiety, no. Pressure, no. Was I anxious or not anxious because the same thing, anxiety, but I had a little bit of nervousness, you know, I ain't gonna sit here and lie to you because I, I, that'd be a lie. But so I was a little nervous. Hard to sleep last night because I, I was ready to go. Monty, uh, you hear a lot of guys talk. Uh, Monty? Uh, yeah, that's what I said, Monty. Monty, you said Monty. Monty. Dude, I'm a, I'm a redneck. I, I talk with kind of different, so you can't – that's dialect. Uh, <laughs> Monty. Uh, I wanted to ask you, there are a lot of different guys who, you know, you hear the same thing over and over, dream come true. I'm glad to have the opportunity, all that stuff. But, you know, you've played football for, heck, I don't know how long, probably the last 10 years of your life, and you probably want to do it for another 10 years. How excited is it? are you to have the opportunity to make a living, to make a really good living at, you know, doing something you, you clearly love? Uh, it's lit, man, like. We've been working for this since we were little kids. I know I had since I was nine. And I've been saying since I was nine, I was going to play on Sundays. So I'm just going to wait and see and see what team picks me and gives me that opportunity. All right, up next, let's have Connor Riley and then Mathis Ornillas. Hey, Monty, I wanted to, Monty, excuse me. Uh, I wanted to ask you about one of your teammates, N'Kobe Dean. What about him sort of really impresses you? Brain, smarts. He's very, like, um, very, very, very smart kid. You know, you can tell he was brought up well by his parents, and he has good genes as far as all that. And, you know, he's blessed to be that smart because there's a lot of people, you know, you can't really control it if you're smart or not. And he just got it, you know. He got the whole package. He can play football. He can do school well. And, you know, he's going to be successful. Just as, as long as he keeps doing what he's been doing, he's going to be super successful. No question. Mati, uh, Mateus from Brazil. Uh, first of all, congratulations for the pro day. Uh, we we heard a lot of players talking about like the talk they have for this the scouting reports with the and the teams. Now, how, how was this process for you? Was as an easy process? You have to answer the same question a lot of times. How, how is that for the players? Like they you're so used to like be on the field and training, and then you have to be for all this process of interviews and talk with coaches and searching about uh, about the NFL and how you have to be better for the next level. Man, it's just like high school recruiting, honestly, it's taking a bunch of phone calls, talking to a bunch of new people, you know, them asking your story, you know, how you was growing up. So it was like, you know, just guys at a high level. Thank you a lot, good luck. Appreciate it, thank you. All right, up next, let's have Palmer Toms. Yeah, Monty, was there any disappointment in not being able to go to Indy for the combine? Or uh, was it, was it, were you just ready to go wherever they wanted you to work out? So, obviously, I've been watching the combine since. I really started paying attention to it my first year at Georgia. But, yeah, of course I wanted to go to the combine. You know, who doesn't? You know, 
you play football and you make it this far, it's like a lifelong dream. So, but it is what it is. I can't control it. So, you know, I got my opportunity today. All right. Thanks so much, Monty, and good luck with everything. Thank you. <laughs> Monty, also. Thank Monty. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, thanks so much for tuning in today. Um, we are going to have a recording sent out to you guys. And also, um, Steve Colquitt wanted me to remind all of you that we are going to have pictures on Smug Mug that are now available. Um, and if you have any issues with him, Bill, or with those photos, please feel free to reach out. Um, thanks again, guys. And I hope you guys have a rest, a great rest of your day. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. Of course.